All right, peeps, let's learn about uh, what happens in the year of 1863 during the U.S. Civil War. All right, a little background information. Um, remember, this is about a year and a half, to, uh, two, two years into the Civil War. Uh, in 1861 and 1862, um, both the Union and the Confederates had found some successes and some defeats. Um, the Union found most of their successes found most of their successes in the, um, in the West here, like in Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, there, in their and down in, along the Mississippi, in their quest to continue to do the Anaconda Plan, um, which you can see in the bottom right here, where they're going to strangle the South um, by using a blockade and cutting along the Mississippi River. So the Union found some success doing that. Confederates found most of their success out here in the East, battling against the Union Army of the Potomac. Um, Robert E. Lee becomes a very successful general, and he, um, uh, and he defeats the Union Army again and again. Again, in 1862, the Emancipation Proclamation is, um, is, is created by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, this freed the slaves that were still in uh, areas controlled by the Confederacy, uh, and it was designed to weaken the uh, South's ability to fight by taking away some of their, the people that um, could create the stuff that they needed. Finally, uh, 1862 ends with the Battle of Fredericksburg, which is a pretty awful Union defeat. Um, it's very lopsided, and it's uh, kind of an unnecessary um, battle to begin with. And, uh, and that leads us into 1863. So let's go forward. All right, in the West, uh, again, the Union is finding some success here in Kentucky and in Tennessee. Uh, the Battle of Shiloh takes place. They also are able to capture uh, New Orleans down here in Louisiana in their quest to take over the Mississippi River. Um, they are able to conquer most of the Mississippi River except for a small town about right here uh, in the middle of Mississippi. I'm coloring it in green. Um, a small town there along the Mississippi River called, Mississippi River called Vicksburg. Uh, this, this city is able to hold out for a, a while, and eventually Ulysses S. Grant, who is right here, the Union general, uh, has to lay siege to Vicksburg. Um, and he will eventually take Vicksburg in July of, seven, of 1863. So it takes a little while, but eventually they get Vicksburg. And when Vicksburg happen, uh, is conquered by the Union, the entire Mississippi now belongs to the Union, which, it, which splits the South in two. Um, a little bit further into Tennessee, uh, there are some Union armies kind of going this way into Tennessee as well. So some are going down the Mississippi River and some are going this way into, um, into Tennessee and the rest of the Confederacy. Uh, while they're doing this, some major battles happen. One of them is Chickamauga, which is a extremely bloody um, battle, and it's a victory for the South. It takes place uh, somewhere over here in Tennessee. Uh, it pushes the Union back. It holds the Union Army um, back for, for a little while. And like I said, it's a very bloody battle, and it's a victory for the Confederacy. And this takes place in September um, September of 1863. Vicksburg is conquered by the Union in July of 1863. So, in the West, uh, the Union takes over the Mississippi, but the South is still uh, holding strong. Let's look at the East. Okay, let's take a look at the war in the East. Um, so we're back focusing on uh, Virginia. Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee is still in charge of the Army of Northern Virginia. Uh, he has his good generals like Thomas Stonewall Jackson, who can be seen here. And, uh, and in May of 1863, Robert E. Lee will find his greatest success, his best victory ever at the Battle of Chancellorsville. Chancellorsville is a town near Fredericksburg, so that battle that took place in the end of 1862. Robert E. Lee at Chancellorsville will actually split his army, give half his army to Thomas Stonewall Jackson, and in a surprise attack, they will put a whooping on the Union Army. And like I mentioned, this was Robert E. Lee's greatest victory. Uh, it builds a whole bunch of confidence for the, the South, so much confidence that they will decide to invade the North, and they will invade Pennsylvania in the North. Um, but unfortunately for the South, Thomas Stonewall Jackson will actually be killed accidentally by their own men um, in this battle. Uh, so the South wins the battle, they lose Thomas Stonewall Jackson, but they gain a lot of confidence and they in decide to invade the North. Um, the Army of the Potomac has to chase the, the Southern Army into the North, and they will meet in Pennsylvania at a place called 
Gettysburg. Uh, this battle will be an epic battle. It will take place over three days. It will end on July 4th. Um, that should be a J. Uh, July 4th, and this will be the strongest, the furthest, the closest that the South will ever get to winning the war. It is known as the high water mark of the Confederacy. High water mark talks about, uh, refers to like a flood. Uh, a flood, when it reaches its very highest point, is known as the high water mark of the flood. So when the Confederacy reaches its very highest point, it's known as the, very, the high water mark of the Confederacy. In this battle, Robert E. Lee will send a group of troops to attack the North, um, and you can see this group retreating back after this very failed attack. It's a very famous thing called Pickett's Charge. You can see them in this picture retreating after the attack, and you can see Robert E. Lee um, sad and sullen, uh, knowing that he has lost the battle. Um, this battle will uh, is a turning point for the in the war. The Union is now strong, um, and the South is weakened. And at the same time, in 1863, there is a draft. A draft is uh, when soldiers are forced to fight. They no longer have to volunteer. Uh, and this draft takes place in the North, and there is a backlash against this um, against this draft. And in New York City, uh, there will be riots against the draft. Um, but that, is, that begins in 1863. Let's look at the Battle of Gettysburg. Okay, so in September of 1863, there will be an event at, held at the Gettysburg Battlefield to talk about the importance of the battle and uh, to honor those who had fought. Uh, the battle obviously is important because it is a turning point in the war, um, but remember 50,000 people had fought and died there, and so there's a, a new cemetery there that needs to be kind of honored. Uh, at this event, uh, famous people and important people will come, they will speak, um, but obviously Abraham Lincoln is the president, so he's allowed to speak too. And he will only talk for about two and a half minutes, but his Gettysburg Address, his speech that he gives, uh, is probably one of the most important speeches ever given uh, in American history. In it, he talks about the Declaration of Independence. Uh, he talks about renewing the ideas in there, like all men are created equal, and that government is for the people and by the people, and that he honors the, the people who fought and died for this cause to preserve the Union and preserve democracy and end slavery. And, uh, and his words, even though they're so short, are so powerful that his speech, out of all the things that are said at this event, his speech will go down in history as, as one of the greatest and most defining moments in American history. It defines the country. Last little thing, I made a mistake. It, it's not in September, it's actually in November. Finally, here is a complete uh, 1863 timeline. There's one thing I want to focus on here. Um, the first colored soldiers are allowed to fight in the Union Army after the Emancipation Proclamation officially begins in Janu on January 1st, uh, 1863. So these colored soldiers are African Americans, they're freed blacks or, um, or, or slaves who escaped who decide to fight for this cause to end slavery, preserve the Union, and all that. Uh, finally, remember I, I made a mistake, it's not in September of, of, of 1863, it's in November that Lincoln gives his famous Gettysburg Address. Um, but that is all, thank you guys, and enjoy your time.